So the thing that, that we spend a lot of time talking about is, is, and have done for years, is this acceleration in disruption. And, and we think it's important right now because the whole market's not talking about it. Uh, the whole market's talking about inflation and economic recovery, et cetera. But, but, but we would just point out a couple of things that we know are now true. Um, and then firstly is that, is that computers are getting faster. And so, so we've known for years now that Moore's law would accelerate compute power and accelerating compute power accelerates disruption. So for, for the viewers, that's as simple as, you know, the internet used to just be able to be in, a, in, in an internet cafe and search stuff and now it can move through pictures to streaming video to running software to providing your food delivery on a, on a Friday night. And so as, the, as computers get faster, disruption accelerates. Um, and we know that computers will continue to get faster for at least the next 15 years. And so on simple estimates, every computer in the world should actually get 60 times more powerful over that 50, 15 year period. And so, so on the supply side, disruption will accelerate. The really interesting thing that happened last year because of COVID is normally technology would happen slowly over time as people get used to it, i.e. your child does it and then you do it and then your grandparents do it. Mm. Um, COVID effectively forced that acceleration in adoption. And so we have this interesting connection where you have an acceleration in the supply side of, of, of debt disruption and an acceleration in the demand side of disruption. And so most people are expecting all of these companies to slow in the second half as COVID goes away, all of this disruption to slow. And what we think might happen is the reverse, it actually accelerates or continues to accelerate from what we saw last year. And, and we don't think that's actually factored into a lot of share prices today. Yeah, so clearly higher interest rates does lower the price of long duration equities um, and growth stocks would be part of that group. And so we've definitely seen a part of the backup in interest rates has caused a correction in valuations. Um, but we would argue it is just that, it is a correction in valuations. The interest rates don't change who wins and loses in the long run. They just change the price you pay for them. Um, and so what investors need to try and get their head around is how far do they think interest rates will back up? And so when is the opportunity to invest in some of these great winners that we know are still coming through? Um, and so from our point of view, I think most people agree that it's very difficult for interest rates to back up significantly just because of the amount of debt there is in the world today. Um, and that, that large amount of debt has obviously got worse because of COVID, uh, significantly worse because of COVID, and ultimately that becomes a drag on growth. And so even if you look at Joe Biden's stimulus plans in the US, you know, they're being funded by higher tax rates. Um, and so ultimately there isn't this concept that people are just printing money and spending bridges to nowhere. They are actually trying to eventually balance, balance budgets. And so from that point of view, we still feel a low growth world is one you can expect after the recovery. We completely see the recovery will be, will be higher growth. Uh, and we still think a lower, inf a lower interest rate world is one that you can expect. And so that's ultimately going to be fertile on a medium term view for growth equities. Look, if we do get to 15% interest rates or 10% interest rates or even 5% interest rates, I think we've all got a problem, um, <laughs> not just growth equities. Uh, and so from that point of view, you know, we would argue 2.5% is, is definitely the, the peak that we think you could get to. Uh, the speed you get there is important. If you get there slowly, it's, it's still not a big issue. Um, but, but much higher rates would, would see us move into much more of a capital protection road. Uh, and if the Fed did lose control of inflations or interest rates, you know, that's a scary place for all asset classes, not, not just growth equities.